for centuries, warfare has made pandemics worse. It's, all, it's always been an element there. And um, when you've got this sort of warfare going on, when you've got people mixing in large numbers, and you've got chaos and you've got reduced food supplies. It's not just COVID, it's going to be pneumonia, it's going to be gastroenteritis in children, malnutrition. I mean, there's a lot of things that could be happening here. COVID might well be the least of it, mm. but you've got two groups of people coming together who are poorly immunized. Ukrainians are under immunized, maybe 35, 40% coverage, and, um, and probably not the best vaccines, and Russians certainly haven't had the best vaccines. So you could get quite a significant mixing and you could even get a new variant emerging from that area. So it could be pretty bad. It could be, yeah. Um, and it would be dangerous, I guess, because the infrastructure has been hit. Hospitals, etc., would be out of action. Yeah, and a lot and, of them would be. That's right. And people who might, in the Australian context, who are well nourished, not be vulnerable to COVID-19, might become vulnerable. So younger people, if they are malnourished and essentially frail as a result of warfare in two or three weeks' time, depending on how long this goes, mm. could become vulnerable to severe disease, yet to be seen. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Uh, most of Australia then is coming off the peak of uh, Omicron infections, but cases have been rising in WA, I think over a 1,000 cases a day of late. How much higher do you think they'll go in that state? They could go a lot higher. Um, they, have put, they have not done what... New South Wales did, which was lift all restrictions mm. too early with Omicron, like they did back in December. So they're keeping a break on it. And it's a freshly immunized, relatively freshly immunised population, which means that in those first few weeks after immunisation, you are quite well protected against infection. So it could not, it may not be as bad as you saw in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria, but it could go, you know, it could get to quite reasonable numbers, but hopefully not associated with a lot of hospitalisations and deaths. Mm. We've spoken recently about this sub-variant that out there. Japan, I think, is it's in Japan particularly. What's it's here the latest as well. with that? Right. Um, so BA2, it's it's, uh, it's sort of a brother or sister of BA1, which is the one we've seen come through. It's more contagious. Um, there's a lot of debate as to whether or not it's more severe. A lot of people are saying it isn't. Some people are saying it is. I think the Japanese saying it looks as if it's more severe. Mm. Um, and so, so you're, if you've had Omicron infection, you may not be that resistant to BA2. And that's the risk for Australia as we come into winter. We could get a BA2 surge. We've just got to wait and see. And the key here is make sure you've got all your third doses. And if you're, uh, if you're qualified for a fourth dose, get a fourth dose. Well, on the health report tonight on our own at 5.30. We will. Thank you, Norman. You're welcome.